Studying human geography is all about studying people, space, place and society. And Amsterdam is the perfect place to do that. In our program you can choose from four specializations, urban geography, political geography, environmental geography and economic geography. So as urban geographers uh, we want to understand the dynamics of cities and their distinctive ways of life. Cities are places of power, political, economic and cultural. Uh, they are places of possibilities, but they're also full of contradictions. So they are also places of inequality, uh, places of fragmentation. So we want to understand how places are different, cities are different in this respect. Because it matters where you come from, whether you grow up in Amsterdam or Bogota or Paris. These cities are all different in terms of the quality and the structure of the built environments, in terms of the economies, in terms of political systems. And it's really important to understand these place by specific dynamics to address some of the big uh, social challenges that cities face today. For us, it's very important to combine the more theoretical sessions where we read the kind of research has been done about cities with more empirical assignments. In this sense, it's really great that we're located in Amsterdam because it's in a way our laboratory where we can understand how these complex and theoretical and abstract concepts really take form in the everyday city. Since the late 70s, uh, multinationals have set up so-called global supply chains, which basically means that everything we consume here in the global north actually is being manufactured or assemblaged in the global south. We have built an economy which is based on cheap transportation through containers, fiscally subsidized um, shipping oil, large harbors, which brings us goods from all over the world. If you want to understand why that is, what the consequences are and how this is actually driven, then this is the track that you need to follow. Well, what is absolutely unique is the bringing together of the material part of global supply chains and the immaterial part of the global supply chains. The material part is familiar to us because that's the stuff that we consume. The immaterial part is much less well known and it has everything to do with the value that is extracted from those global supply chains which is managed by law firms, uh, banks, uh, but also trust firms like Intertrust here behind me where approximately a couple of thousand shell companies are being managed on behalf of all sorts of multinationals from all over the world uh, turning the Netherlands in one of the largest tax avoidance paradises of the world. The fun part of this course is that students are supposed to apply the theoretical more academic literature which we discuss in class to current affairs. Students are supposed to pick news items which one way or the other illustrate or are cases of the kind of stuff that we have discussed during class. And that makes the course itself quite topical and, and relevant in order to understand what is going on in the world in which you live, which is a complicated global world. The social relevance of the course on advanced environmental geography is evident because students are already going on strike every Friday worldwide to protest against the lack of action on climate change. In this particular course, we are looking at all the different environmental issues and we're trying to help the students understand how best to govern these problems in order to ensure that our health is not affected by an unhealthy planet, but also to ensure that we can manage these resources sustainably so that we also have jobs in the future. We focus on environmental problems affecting land, water, oceans, um, the atmosphere and biodiversity, but in a sense, we spend most of our time looking at climate change and freshwater issues, as these two issues are, I think, the most important issues affecting the global population today and in the coming 30 years. The lectures in this course are primarily interactive, which means that in every single lecture, the students get a chance to participate in either a debate or in trying to figure out a way to address a particular environmental problem. At the end of the year, we hope that they will work on a master's thesis, and that thesis should ideally be on a cutting edge issue and we're hoping that by doing such a cutting edge research even though it's more difficult that they will then be able to market themselves in the labor market hereafter. Political geography is basically about the relation between power and space and it's not really focused on one specific kind of topics but more as an approach to all kind of societal processes 
from that perspective, looking at the, the social, spatial dimension of politics and the power relations that are at play. We are here at the monument that has been erected for the volunteers from the Netherlands that went to fight fascism in Spain in the 30s during the, the Spanish uh, Civil War. And it's a very interesting monument because there are very few monuments that are not related to states, to national and international wars. And it's an example of how people are moved also by their uh, representation, their, their understanding of how the society should be organized uh, geographically and politically. In the second semester, students have a lot of freedom to choose a specific topic for their thesis. Range from elections and the rise of populism, bordering uh, migration policies, but also sometimes very, very original uh, topics. Like last year, I had someone who worked on um, the impact of intimate partner violence on a feeling of home of, of victims. Besides your specialization, you will work on your methodological and other transferable skills. As a geographer, you need to be able to work with qualitative, quantitative and spatial data. And during our program, you'll advance your expertise in all three of them. Secondly, geographers are known to take an integrative approach towards understanding place. We'll train you to do that, in particular during an international field trip. <laughs>